It makes talking about it makes me want to cry. But with that being said, I think it's an opportunity for us to grow. And I think that sometimes you see people kind of nonchalant about losing animals to predators. And I think that's a dangerous thing to do because we have so much control over the environment that we're caring for these animals in. And it's up to us to give them the best life possible. and we live here at the Sunshine Farm. We're a plant-based modern homestead in upstate New York. We have chickens, goats, horses, and hopefully a thriving garden in just a few months. But today we're not going to share about that. We're going to share about uh, a disappointing experience on the homestead and experiencing our first loss. Constant distraction. Hey, Every Pat. animal just starts doing something in the house as soon as, as we start filming. Record. Piper's chewing on a box. Teddy's in investigating her chewing on a box. The, the dogs were both brawling with each other. Teddy's now eating the cat scratching post. Go on. So yesterday, while we were um, sitting inside, we were free ranging the chickens for the first time in a few weeks because mm -hmm. it was a nice day and they love to get out and they love to run over to the compost pile and scratch it up and explore the raised beds that are pretty much empty. And there was like a moment where we like saw all of them kind of like run back to the run and they were kind of like alert. But Chris looked over and he still saw. There were still some stragglers behind and not were... everybody was acting urgent. So it didn't seem yeah. like anything was real, a real big deal. They oftentimes will get They'll oftentimes get spooked by random things, and especially with our barn cats crawling around, they like to hang out around them, and the barn cats will sometimes surprise them and make them run yeah. away, so. Yeah, and normally, um, we... <laughs> you are such a little cute one. Come here. Ooh, so cute. So where the compost pile is, where the chickens love to go and scratch and pick through, and we always love watching them over there, because it's so... It's so funny seeing them like pick through all of our kitchen scrap, kitchen scraps. Yeah, seeing them play King of the Hill, standing on top of the little mound. <laughs> yeah, we did not realize the fox had made a home back there, probably very intentionally. It's definitely some kind of shelter, but it's not very hidden. There's lots of no. Ways. I think that's a fox den. I think that's a fox den. Yeah, so there's a couple trees that have fallen over there in the past couple of years and they have uprooted a decent amount of the roots with them. And I mean, it wasn't until after the fact, but it does look like within that uprooted root system, the fox has made a little bit of a den underneath there with there being so much coverage from all of the roots and soil. Yeah, and it was so much further from any of the other fox dens on our property that we just didn't notice it. And so close to two houses, because it's smack dab in the middle of our house and our neighbor's house. About... Although, there has been a time where we've heard sounds from that direction. Yeah, so unfortunately, while they were over the compost pile, um, a fox grabbed one of our five original hens. And we didn't notice until we were getting ready to go to the store and we were putting the chickens away because we don't leave them free ranging when we're not home. We are on our way to the store to pick up some things for tapping our maple trees. We're both in kind of a bummer mood because we think one of our chickens may have been taken by a predator, which would have been the first time for us. So the not so fun part about homesteading, hoping for the best, hoping that we get home and we find her. And we can find her. So Chris was looking around and he found a little pile of feathers over by that area. So the feather pile is over here. Behind the pile of composting. Where? Here. 
this? This. Oh. Yeah, that's not good. Has a lot of feathers. Yeah. And they're her feathers. Yeah, they're black. They're all black. Which is always pretty much a sign that a fox has been around. I mean, other animals will leave some feathers, but generally a fox is really, really stealthy. They'll come in, they'll grab a, grab a chicken, and they'll run off, and you won't really see any signs of it except for a little pile of feathers. So that was really sad. We were hoping somehow that maybe she just got scared by it and was able to kind of run off and hide, but yeah. that was not the case. We went to the store to grab some stuff for tapping our maple trees, and then when we got back, she wasn't there. A couple hours later, we saw the fox running through the fields, and it was carrying something in its mouth. So, not a fun day, and for us, having our farm animals be also companion animals and not just serving a utilitarian purpose, um, it was especially difficult, I think, for us losing a, an animal on our homestead. Yeah. They all have names. Her name was Penguin. She was a black ostrilor. Yeah, she's one of your favorites. Yeah, she was a really funny, when we first got her, I mean, so our first chickens, obviously, you kind of, probably most people have a special bond with them because it's a, it's a big new experience. And you spend lots of time with the chicks. Yeah, and, you and you're really worried about raising them well and making sure they're all healthy and in good shape. And she was really funny personality because she was totally the boss when she was a chick. And we noticed that from the outset. She would just go around and bossing everybody around. And then they all grew up and she suddenly became not the boss and she was at the bottom of the of the totem pole of the pecking order in the group and she went through a couple rough periods last year where she was going through a pretty bad molt yeah and she, she went was, broody she was for a really long time multiple times and not but not actually laying she on any eggs she was so funny when she was broody because she acted all fierce but she wasn't at all fierce yeah she would get really puffed up she made little dinosaur sounds when you tried to grab her <laughs> yeah she's so funny yeah, she had a special personality, as they all do, and yeah, it was just, it was sad. So, I know other people experience loss on the homestead, and maybe it seems more significant than what we've experienced, and there's no, no reason to compare. Our time will all come, unfortunately, but I think the one lesson that um, I want to learn from this experience is... Any loss can make you a better caretaker of the animals that you have. Um, and if you don't take it seriously, I think that you're losing the opportunity to better care for all the, the lives that you're caring for here on the farm. <laughs> That's not a <laughs> Any time that you, an animal's injured or hurt or, or killed, it gives you an opportunity to look at how things are going and how you can improve the lives of the animals you're caring for. Make sure you're doing things preventively, proactively. And for us, I know we really want to improve our fencing system for the chickens so that they can free range, but they can do so safely. I think it's just really hard because it's a it's an investment. Those those things aren't you can't just get a yeah. hold of them overnight. You know, they cost a lot of money and so We'll have to budget for that and prioritize that and um, find a way to implement that in the spring and summer. But for now, we're going to probably only free range them when we are actively outside, which is not going to be in the next few weeks because it's too cold to be actively outside. Mm -hmm. But hopefully soon though, spring is spring around is the corner. Coming. But maybe we'll start moving our compost pile in there or having a small one in there at least. Yeah, you can always have different areas of composting. Yeah, so that's the update for you guys. Essentially, the message here is we experienced a loss and it was sad and there was some tears on my end. I don't know if you cried, but... Uh, <laughs> um, not that it's... Not that I wouldn't have cried, but... Yeah. Not that I was trying not to. It make, talking about it makes me want to cry. But with that being said, I think it's an opportunity for us to grow. And I think that... Sometimes you see people kind of nonchalant about losing animals to predators. And I think that's a dangerous thing to do because we have so much control over the environment that we're caring for these animals in. And it's up to us to give them the best life possible and to care for them well. And I think being a good steward of them is so important. Um, I did have somebody one time, you know, who didn't support people having chickens at all was like, oh, just set them free, they'll be fine. And I think that's absolutely the wrong approach when you have an animal that you're caring for. I think that you should be doing everything you can to protect it from 
a life that it never would have experienced, being that it's a domesticated animal. It's not going to know how to fend for itself. It's not a wild animal. It's not, you know, part of the cycle of life for that animal. The, the cycle of life is in the safe environment that you keep it in. Yeah. And I think that's an important perspective to have because it's really easy to think of these animals as, oh, you know, it's animals, they can take care of themselves, but we've created them in, um, in the context that genetically and environmentally they can only really exist in these safe spaces we've created for them. So it made me reflect on that and made me think about that and how can we better protect them, how can we better care for them. It's a good reminder, not one I wanted and definitely not one I would recommend to anyone else. So, so yeah. Well, thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry if it was a, not the most positive one, but maybe we can share a message to help you protect your animals better and a reminder from our bad experience on the steps you can take to prevent things like this happening in the future on your homestead. And we thank you guys for being a part of our journey. Thank you guys. We can't wait to share our next video with you. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.